Thank you for coming tonight. Is Jesus down there where you are? Yes, he is. Just say his name with me, will you? And oh, just just say it to him and let him know how happy we are to have him. <clears throat> with all these people, wouldn't it be lonesome in here without Jesus? Well, I can't stand it until he gets here. Well, <clears throat> where do you think I'm going to find the text tonight? That's the pastor? Did you say that? You leave me. Well, it includes Philippians 3.10, but it's Philippians 3. <clears throat> But it includes 310. Did you find it? All right. Just now I'm going to read the first three verses. I, I, I'm in my spirit and amused every time I begin reading this chapter and I told you why the other night because the way it starts out you're just sure Paul's going to say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. You're just sure because when he says finally my brethren that does not sound like a preacher winding up things. But oh what comes out of this man's heart after he says this, finally, my brethren. You know, sometimes a preacher says his best things after he says, now, finally. <laughs> and it's just as though Paul hasn't delivered all that's in his heart. And he just lets go. And the, the fire and the life and the vision, the conviction, the anointing, the purpose, the declaration, all of this Paul pours out in the rest of this chapter. And the whole church of Jesus Christ comes back to this chapter time and time and time and time again because we want Paul's fire. We want Paul's vision. We want Paul's Christ. We want the revelation of Christ that Paul has. I hope, I pray, we want the possession of Christ that Paul has. He's accused of being beside himself. He's not only beside himself, he's outside himself. We want that, and I mean that. He is beside himself, but he's outside of himself. He said, I live, yet not I. Paul has moved out, reckons himself dead, crucified, and his body given a living sacrifice for the indwelling of this wonderful Christ. He's sold out. He's, he's given his all. And this is what Jesus wants of us. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, finish it. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. And that's what he's asking us for, to move out. And, and let Jesus come into our bodies and take over and live in us and live out his life again through us just like he lived in that body that Mary gave him. It's, it's a projection of the incarnation. This is where these people who believe in reincarnation, this is where they got off. It isn't reincarnation, it's a projection of the incarnation. Christ coming in and living in us. This is what he wants. But he can't do that as long as we want to live. We have desires. We have plans. We have ambitions. There's still something that we're after, that we want, that we're not willing to give up ourselves, give over our lives, surrender our bodies, and let these bodies of a truth be the very temple of the living God. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, to me, indeed, he says, it's not an irksome thing for me at all, or a, a grievous thing, but a precaution for you. To keep warning us, keep warning us, keep after us and I tell the Lord all the time please don't leave me alone I don't want you Lord don't ever leave me alone don't leave me alone keep on me keep after me keep dealing with me keep prodding me keep drawing me keep calling me whatever is necessary keep after me but don't leave me alone Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. That's the crowd that's constantly trying to draw you back from where you are in God. These old Judaizers that wanted to draw these Philippians back under the law and steal their bondages, steal their liberty from them rather, and draw them back into bondage. You know, the world, the flesh, and the devil is constantly trying to do this to us. To get us out of God. To steal our liberty. To draw us back. How many of you are grateful for as far as the Lord has brought you? How many of you are shouting the praises of God because you're not what you used to be. Thank God we're not what we used to be, but we're not yet what we want to be. Eh? And if that's so, there's still hope for us. There's still hope for us. As long Self-satisfaction is the end of all progress. But as long as we're hungry, God can feed us. If we're thirsty, he can give us drink. If we're sick, he can reveal himself to us and heal us. If we're calling, he said he'd answer. If we're asking, he said we'd receive. 
If you're seeking, he said we'd find. If you're knocking, keep it up until the door's open. I'd like to just, I hadn't thought previously of saying this, but I, the last time I was here, I gave you the privilege of sending up uh, questions. And then each night I answered a question that had been sent up, and somebody evidently remembers that because I got a question sent up to me. And right here is as good a place as any to answer that question. It's from evidently a group of folks. If, if there's prayer groups coming into the meeting, we welcome you. Anybody who's here, we believe you're here because Jesus put it on your heart to come. And I believe this is the crowd that Jesus wants to meet tonight. And he brought you here. Praise the Lord. So these folks says, tell us how to pray through. We don't really know. Well, I'm so grateful to God today for anybody who wants to know how to pray through. And honey, here it is in this little word from the Lord. Ask and ye shall receive. And if you don't get it by asking, seek. And you shall what? Fine. And if you don't get it by seeking, what does he say? All right, you knock and you keep on knocking and keep on knocking and keep in there and stay before God and keep on knocking and keep on praying and keep on calling and don't give up until you have gotten through to God and have gotten your answer. And you'll know when you're through. And you will know when you get your answer. You will know when you have prayed through. Now to really pray through, you don't, you don't get through to God in a five-minute excursion trip to the altar. You don't get really through in, in just, well, I have, I've said everything that I know to say and I haven't heard a voice and nothing has happened and I don't know what else to do. Honey, stay there. Stay there. Pray it all over again. Say everything that you said before. And say it over again. If that's what you want and that's what you're praying about, make known what you want. If you go to the store for bread, you ask for bread till you get bread. And if you're hungry enough, you won't leave till you get bread. And you'll keep on asking for bread. There's no bread on that shelf. Why isn't there bread on that shelf? And you'll keep calling and asking and inquiring until you get bread. And that's the way to get to God. And I say again, you don't always get an answer in five minutes or 10 or 15 or 25 or 150. And sometimes it's all day and sometimes it's all night and sometimes it's a week and sometimes it's two weeks. But stay there. Daniel prayed three weeks. Moses went up in the mountain and stayed 40 days until he received from God what God wanted him to have. That, that's it. Get in there and stay there until God meets you. Before I left home, there was something I had to know from God. I had to know it. And there are things that only God can answer. And only, if you want to know the will of God, only God can tell you His will. Don't run around to people. The more you talk to people, the more confused you get. And, and please stay away from these people that say, Yay, 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 thus saith the Lord. Start running. <laughs> and get, get to God. And hear from God. No matter what people say, 
I still have to hear from God. And then there's no doubt. There's no question. And further down the road, you can say, God, you said. You said. And you can hold him to it. Amen. And and He he'll take care of you. He'll see that thing through. He'll, I promise you, God will keep his promises. Amen. I had to know. And I started praying 8 o'clock in the morning. You pray for a while on your knees and... Well, after a while, your knees get tired. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. And I walked and prayed and went back and got down and got tired in that position, got up and walked again and prayed and kept on praying. And it took me from 8 o'clock in the morning all through that day until 2 o'clock the next morning. But I stayed right there. But the 2 o'clock the next morning, he came. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. And devils or people or anybody else can't take that away from me. God said it. And I know God said it. And I know that I know that I know that I know. You can, you, there is a, such a thing as praying through. You pray through and you, you will know and you will know when you've prayed through. You'll know when you've prayed through for people. You'll know when you have prayed through for your children. You will know when you've prayed through for your husband or your wife. You will know when you have prayed through for revival. And I pray God that he will put such a burden on the prayer warriors and the senior citizens. Amen. And the prayer groups. And, and in the church, the men, the women, the boys, the girls, real, true, Holy Ghost prayer, praying in the Spirit until God pours out the revival in this church that He wants to send. Until God, until this money is released. For God to do what he wants to do. Why, it, the world has all the money to do what they want to do today. Every city I go into all over the world, the banks are building banks. Skyscrapers. What are they going to do with all these banks they're building? Every city that you go into. So there, there's plenty of money in the world. God can release money. Somebody prays that thing through. Who will assume the burden? Well, God, God puts a burden on your heart. Give yourself to God, to prayer. Well, this, this church is packed out. How many of you people come to church sometimes and can't get in? You do need a church, don't you? Do you think you need a church? Well, God can get into this situation and get His will accomplished and get this thing through that you can accommodate the people that He wants to send and the revival that God wants to give and it won't be a burden on anybody. The Lord promised to take the burden. The government is on His shoulders. If we try to carry it, we get a golden neck. But the government's on his shoulders. And when he's allowed to carry it, he gets things through. I think Pastor Trelene just prepared the way a little while ago. I was glad. I was glad he didn't stand up here and say that we are the church and you are the people and bless God, we've got it all. He didn't say that, did he? But he exhorted you to come on and go on that there is more. There's more. Well, there is more. There is more. I, he told you that I have just been in Korea. I wish I could pick up everyone that's here tonight. I wish I could just pick you up and take every Christian in America to Korea 
to see the revival that is on in that country and see what God is doing there. I wish you could see it. I wish you could feel it. I wish you could be in it. I wish you could be in it. It, it is so genuine and so real and so of God. You, I suppose, well, most of you have heard of Dr. Cho, the pastor of this church in Korea. He, they have 50,000 members. 50,000 members. And by 1980, he says he knows he'll have 100,000 members. They're in their, they've built three churches already, and they're in their third church now that seats 10,000 people. And, and they have to use both churches. The one, the last one they built is just beside the, uh, the second one. And, uh, they have four services every Sunday, and 10,000 people four times in the big church and the overflow of 2,000 in the other church. And they have this go four times a day and no person is allowed to attend church twice on Sunday to give everybody a chance to get in once on Sunday. So 50,000 people can get to church at least once on Sunday. The aisles are packed and jammed and the Koreans... They sit on the floor right up and, and somebody comes in the door, can we move a little closer, which means putting your knees further in somebody's back and, and the service goes on. Oh, I wish you could hear 10,000 people worshiping the Lord. 10,000, like the sound of many water. Not, no one voice trying to project itself but 10,000 people just like the waves the sound of many waters worshiping and adoring the Lord and when the 10,000 people praying all praying at the same time and you don't hear one voice above the rest of the voices and those little Koreans when they pray their bodies just going like this they're really agonizing and praying they're not saying beautiful words to God, believe me. It's an agony. It's a cry. It's a prayer. It's a groan. It's a groan continually for God's Spirit to continue His operation in their land. Everybody has a Bible. I watch those people when they get within sight of the church. I watch them run from the time they can see the church they start running and run to the house of God and run in there and find their place and get down and start worshiping and adoring the Lord it is a beautiful thing all over that congregation on Sunday morning I saw people healed by the spirit of God the fruit of the presence of the Holy Ghost people healed all over that place what, what is the secret of it all alright they, they own these churches and they're getting ready to build another church they have to to accommodate all these people but listen to this they went out and bought a mountain and up in that mountain they have, they have a chapel up there that seats about 500 people and it isn't anything for 500 to be up there at a time, praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. They have, listen, they have 170 caves in the mountains up there. And these caves are just equipped with an electric light that hangs down the ceiling and an electric blanket. That's all that's in there. And you go in and wrap yourself up in this electric blanket and stay there to fast and pray. And they fast three days, ten days. Some of them fast thirty days. And is it any wonder God is moving like that? 
And when I was up there in the mountain, here they were up there on the floor in that place, agonizing before God that the revival would continue, that the Spirit of God would continue among them. Fifth church, 50,000 members. And a revival like that. And it's, it's all over the place, everywhere. When I went through customs, going into the country, coming out of the country, in the business houses, they say, you, you, you from America? And I said, yes, I came here to Dr. Cho's church. You know Dr. Cho? Ah, I know. I go to Dr. Cho's church everywhere. I know Dr. Cho's church. Yes, well, it isn't his church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. But a man who's sold out to God that God can move like this. Oh, honey, what do you say? Let's give ourselves to God. God, God is moving. I could take you to right around the world where if God is moving in revival power and pouring out His Spirit. What is happening? What is happening? The precious Holy Spirit Spirit is in the earth getting the bride of Jesus Christ ready, calling out every whosoever will, making us one in this glorious church without spot or wrinkle, making us one, getting us ready for the coming of the Lord, getting us ready, I believe, to give a last our testimony and witness to the supernatural power of God through our lives and living in this old world in this last hour. You know, honey, we're saved, but we're not out of here yet. We're not out of here yet. We're not. And God wants, God wants a people that through whom he can manifest himself in this last hour. He gives them all kinds of names in the scripture. They're his. That remnant, that the overcomers, he calls them called, chosen, faithful. That all kinds of names. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They that wait upon the Lord. They have all these names, but it's the same group. It's the same company, the same crowd that he's calling, that he's dealing with all the time. All right, the next verse in the third chapter of Philippians gives them another name. I just love this verse. Ephesians 3, 3. Here he gives them another verse. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What a crowd to belong to. What a company to belong to. This, we are the circumcision. Well, what does that mean? That's, what does that mean? Well, but you know that circumcision was an act of, of cutting away the flesh. Cutting away the flesh. Paul tells us in Romans that that that's, was all right. That was for Israel. And circumcision was their mark of separation. Oh, but here's this dear Paul again. Listen to him as he says, I bear branded on my body the ownership stamp of Jesus Christ. That wasn't circumcision of the flesh, but it was circumcision of the heart. Paul says that that's the circumcision that, that we believe in. Israel is a, was a people that was separated unto God. God had called them. God had chosen them. We call them God's chosen people. They were. 
God's chosen people. They are God's chosen people. God chose them through that nation to give to us the Messiah. The Messiah. All right. God has a people in the New Testament that He's not asking us to take circumcision of the flesh, but circumcision of the heart. When we are, we are willing to put off the old man. Put on the new man. Colossians. This is, this is beautiful in Colossians. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Colossians 3.10 where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Hallelujah. That's the crowd the Holy Ghost is looking for today. A crowd, a group, a company, listen dear, a company of people to whom Christ is everything. Christ is everything. Christ is our life. Christ is our meat and our drink. Christ is our conversation. Christ fills our thoughts. Christ fills our love life. We're of Him. We're from Him. We're for Him. We're dedicated to Him. We're given to Him. He can have His way with us. He can have His way in us. A company to whom Christ is all and in all. Oh, my dear, He wants to take us into such a dedication to the Lord Jesus Christ that we'll give Him every fiber of our being. We'll give Him every nerve that's in our body. We'll give to Christ every brain cell that we possess. We'll ask Him to fill every hair of our head, to fill every member of our body, every power of our soul, every part of our spirit, that our old man and old life can be crucified, put to death, but that Jesus Christ might be free to live in us in the power of His wonderful Holy Spirit. Paul could say, we are that crowd called the circumcision which worship the Lord in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What a crowd. What a crowd, what a crowd, what a company. Where are those Bible school students? Where are they? Oh, young people, give yourself to Jesus Christ. Don't miss what God has for you in this last hour. This is a time when he said he'd pour out his spirit on all flesh. Young men, didn't he say, they're going to prophesy. The young ladies are going to prophesy. What a time. You give yourself to God and let that Holy Spirit of prophecy so possess you. Amen. He can make a Jeremiah, an Isaiah out of you, a Joel. He can use you. He can, a Daniel, whoever he wants and whatever he wants to make known Jesus Christ in this last hour. Be that man. Be that woman. Give yourself to God for Christ's sake and let Him have His way with you and through you. He will. He will. We will through the power, through the power of the supernatural. And, and this is what he wants. We are the circumcision. We are the, we are the circumcision. Put off, put off the old man and put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That's what sin took away from us, the knowledge of God. Sin took away from us the knowledge of Christ. 
But in this glorious new birth, he says, that knowledge is renewed in us. And that knowledge of Jesus Christ, part of it is, Job, I think it is, who says, before Jesus will be old enough to eat butter, he will know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. Good. And the precious Holy Spirit in this glorious new man within us puts this in us to know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. And, and puts the power of the Holy Ghost in us in such a way that we can stand up before that. <laughs> Aren't the checks of the Spirit wonderful? Aren't they? Are you acquainted with the Holy Spirit that you know His checks? Two people. Oh, my brother, I want you to know a life in God and in the Holy Spirit where you know the checks of the Spirit. Obey the checks of the Holy Ghost. Obey them. He's promised to lead us. Obey his stops. Listen to his voice. And you know, before we learn this in daily life, we, we have to know that in our services too. Oh, thank you for every amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we we get so noisy sometimes, and we get we get so full of activity sometimes that I think we miss an awful lot that we could have in God. We could have in God. Say amen. amen. He, he's come to teach us. He's come to lead us. Don't you like to be in meetings that are led by the Spirit? And where we're being taught by the Spirit? Well, this is what he means when he said, we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean just what we call, let's worship the Lord when we all together praise and adore and give expressions of worship to the Lord. He's not talking only about that. That's part of it. But he's talking about the, our whole life of worship being in the Spirit. We are the circumcision. That's 24 hours of the day, isn't it? Cut off. Cut off. We're done with the world. The flesh. The devil. And we have to let the devil know it. We have to let our flesh know it. We have to let the world know it. And not follow its thought pattern. Not come under its power. Its thinking. The ways, the attitude of the world today. That is another life. You and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Our life is in Him and with Him. Let the world go their way and do what they will. Let us have the mind of Christ. Be led 
light of the Spirit, walk with God and know life in the Holy Ghost. We're the circumcision. Cut off. Don't be, af- don't be afraid to be different. Don't be ashamed to be different. The prophets were, weren't they? Oh. We're the circumcision. We're the circumcision. And they who were circumcised were owned of God. These were God's peculiar people. What is our peculiar mark? That we have no confidence in the flesh. But we worship God in the spirit now this this is to be 24 hours of the day but then when we we live like that 24 hours of the day then when we come together in our services we're we're going to have such a meeting such a meeting owned of the spirit led by the spirit taught by the spirit In our worship, oh, in, in, let's begin with what we call worship. Don't ever stop worshiping Jesus. Don't ever stop. Just pour out and pour back. Let your heart, your spirit, your love flow back to him in adoration. Heaven is full of worship and adoration. All the time, they just love and worship and adore Jesus. But you know, that creates a marvelous atmosphere into which God comes. He inhabiteth, say it, what? All right, now God... God has come down. Well, if God has come down, let's let God take over. And honey, don't don't be afraid that God can't handle the meeting when it gets a little quiet. But you know, how many times when there's a little quietness, when God inhabiteth the praises of his people, and he and you feel God is here. Then right away, 
the babies think we've got to have a message in tongues. And it's usually the babes in Christ. Now, maybe they don't think so. Because, you see, they think they've got the gifts. So they think they're quite mature. Don't you tell them that I said they were babies often. But the babes think, then, that we have to have a message in tongues. How many of you think the Lord can do something more for us than just give a message in tongues, interpretation? How many of you think he can do two or three more things? <clears throat> he can, and he wants to. He wants to if, we, if we're not afraid to be quiet and to be still. Now, I'm not saying anything about tongues and interpretation, but I'm saying don't, don't rush in there until you're positively sure that this is exactly what he wants. Because maybe if we wait a little while, maybe the message could be a deeper one. And the revelation could be a deeper one. Eh? Rather than just a yay, yay one. Huh? You know, yay, yay. I don't know why we have to always start with yay, yay or something. I don't, I don't know that chapter and verse. But, uh, but, oh, I, I, I'm afraid we miss, we miss some beautiful things that God would give us and do for us because we haven't learned to wait on the Lord as part of our worship. You agree with me that waiting on the Lord is part of worship? Yes, they that wait upon the Lord. I tell you, when the Lord was teaching me a few things along this line, he told me this night that he wanted me to keep quiet. Just keep quiet until he told me to speak. So I was sitting on the one I went in that night and he said the same thing to the song leader. He said the same thing to the pastor. And when we got on the platform, song leader came to me and he said, Sister Ham and I, I just, I don't, I don't want to lead singing tonight. He said, I just feel like I'd be a tin soldier up there performing and I just don't want to perform tonight. I said, okay then, if I were you, I wouldn't perform. I'd sit down. So he sat down. And the pastor says, would you mind if I didn't take part in the service tonight? I just want to be quiet. And I said, I want to be quiet too, so we'll all be quiet. And so we just, we sat down. We sat down. The service is supposed to start at 7.30. Well, the quarter to eight came, and there hadn't been a word. Eight o'clock came, and there hadn't been a word. There hadn't been a prayer or a song or a word. A quarter after eight, not a word. 8.30, not a word. Not a word. But I want to tell you, there was no death in that place because we were all in obedience. And it was, there was no death but the, oh, the presence of God. The presence of God in that place was marvelous, marvelous. Well, when it got, I saw that clock getting past 8.30. And I said, said I, now there's unsaved people in here tonight and they don't, they know we're not Quakers and they won't understand what's going on. So maybe I, I had better say something. And I put my hands on the arms of the chair and started to get up from the chair. And there was a deacon sitting way in the back. That deacon didn't know I was getting up from that chair. He did not because he had his eyes closed. And the Lord just let me look at him and know that he had his eyes closed. And when I began to get up from the chair, 
he in a loud voice said, Be still and know that I am God. Well, I sat down, <laughs> and I said, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for this, and I'm not going to move off of this chair until you move and do what you have brought us together to do. My dear, it wasn't. Everybody got quieted again in God, and this wonderful life presence of the Lord that was there wasn't death at all the Holy Spirit came on a young girl and that young girl stood up and began speaking in the spirit and she started out by saying be not unequally yoked together and well you don't know what the spirit's going to say after that but the Holy Ghost through her gave to us the most marvelous revelation of the bridegroom I have ever heard. I have ever heard. And after she described the bridegroom and his beauty and his glory and all, oh, all, oh, then she says he's not going to be unequally yoked with a bride. And then she began to describe the bride, the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife. Her nature, her beauty, her beauty, her glory, her eyes, she has dove's eyes, which are the eyes of the Holy Spirit, that sees with the Spirit. Her vision is born of the Spirit. And on she went, describing her, her lips that pour forth, pour forth the revelation of her bridegroom and her love and devotion to him. Her purity, the purity. Talk about circumcision. How she is so separated unto her beloved that nothing could mind her away from him. And on, oh, it, when that word from the Lord was over, everybody in that place was on their face before God before God what a visitation of I'll never forget what a visitation of God in ministry then then in we worship God in the spirit here we can have the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the precious Holy Ghost in however way he wants to minister to his body minister to the needs of everybody that's present. And and we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. And in worshiping in the Spirit like this, then we're going then we're going to sing. How? How how? No, uh -uh, you're not scriptural. Then we're going to sing. How? Somebody tell me. What does the scripture say? We're going to sing. How? No. You turn. You just turn with me and get scriptural. You turn with me to the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. What did you say? 
the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians and the 15th verse, what is it then? I will pray how? Uh huh. And I will pray with the understanding also. And I will sing. What, dear? Oh, there's a difference. There's a difference. It's the same, but it's different. It's the same, but it's different. I know we, we say all the time we're going we're gonna to sing. We're going to sing in the Spirit. Honey, now you look at singing. We can sing in the Spirit, but believe me, it's going to be a different quality when we sing with the Spirit. If I sing with the Spirit, I'm going to sing His tune. If I sing with the Spirit, I'm going to sing His words. If I sing with the Spirit, I'm going to sing His melody. Can I be naughty? You're the only one up here, Dane. Can I be naughty? <laughs> Do you think I can sing in the Spirit and the tune be my own? You be careful. But if I'm singing with the Spirit, oh, the quality. The quality. The words. The worship. The adoration. What he says, the way he says it, I'm going to sing with the Spirit while he's leading the choir, while he's leading that worship. You're thinking hard. That's all right. That's all right. Have you ever have you ever heard real laughter in the spirit? Huh? Have you ever really real real laughter in the spirit? I was in the last time I was in Germany, a group of Germans, I think of the German people, they're not easily moved. But God sent us an outpouring of the Spirit, and here was a group of German men and women down here at this end of the altar, and the Holy Ghost began to move on them in prayer. And those German men were down there with their faces in the carpet, and they were with their fists on the floor, praying through. Well, they prayed through. And that whole group began to laugh in the Spirit. And they laughed in harmony in the Spirit. I haven't, I haven't heard anything like this anyplace else in the world. But, oh... There are, God wants to break through with us in the supernatural. That people have to say, this is God. I'm going to tell you something else. I saw a young man without a violin playing, going through all the motions of playing a violin in the spirit. And the music of the violin was coming through his lips and sounded just exactly like it. 
And the Spirit of God fell and hit that place. What conviction. What conviction. In the presence of God. You know, when God is present, we're in His presence waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. I, I loved our tarrying meetings. That's an old-fashioned word. How many of you know what it means? That's an old-timer, isn't it, brother? But, oh, I loved our tarrying meetings, waiting before God till the wee hours of the morning. God had a chance to get at us. Give God time, dear. Not just five minutes in His presence. and I, I just take it all by faith. Well, if you pray through and get it, take it. Take it. But don't come up short. Wait on the Lord. And give God a chance to get at us. We don't like to be, to be convicted. But do you welcome conviction? Aren't you glad when God puts a real good dose of Holy Ghost conviction on you? Please say yes. Please say yes. I'm glad when He convicts me. I'm glad when He deals with me. When, when we have Holy Ghost conviction on us, then we're able to pray. And if He puts Holy Ghost conviction on us, He'll put Holy Ghost enablement on us to pray and to make the decision that He wants us to make. God wants to bring us to decision. God, that we say that Jacob wrestled with the angel. That angel kept after Jacob and wouldn't let him go. And he kept dealing with him and dealing with him and wrestling with him and dealing with him. And he wouldn't let him go. I want God to come and lay hold of us and deal with us and bring us to decisions in our lives. We'll be able by the power of God to make decisions, to say yes, and we'll have the power of God in our lives to follow through with it. This is revival, isn't it? This is revival. When the power of God is present and over here God is dealing with somebody. And I love it. I was in a meeting a little while a little while ago in Alexander, Virginia, and in the middle of the message, a woman came out of her seat and came right down and looked up. She says, Will somebody pray for me? Good. 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 The cry of the soul. You know what else I like? We're having revival. Don't tell them. But when the pastor calls on the deacons to pray and they break down in the middle and start bawling and can't finish their prayer, that's what the Word of God talks about. The groan of the Spirit. And they break down in the middle into a sob a sob and can't finish the prayer. <sighs> Things begin to happen. And the Holy Ghost falls. He falls. And somebody else has strength enough to give up and let go and lay down and say, I'm done with it. That issue is settled. Oh, God, help me never to pick it up again. 
uh, and they can have strength to go on. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Strength to say yes. Strength. Do his will, whatever it is. Oh, God, come among us. Oh, God, come among us. Oh, Father, come among us. With thy holiness and thy power. Oh, Holy Ghost, come upon us, I pray thee. You came to convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Precious Holy Ghost, come upon us. Oh, come among us. Oh, God, enable men to do the thing that you've been dealing with them for years to do. Oh, God, enable men to pay the price that you've been asking them for years to pay. Oh, God, help the procrastinator to stop their procrastinations. Oh, God, let men know how late the hour, how short the time. Oh, God, give strength to give up. Give strength to lay down. Give strength to let go. Give strength to quit sinning, I pray thee. Oh, God, cleanse your church. Oh, God, cleanse your people. Separate unto thyself until you have a holy people, a redeemed people a blood-washed people, a victorious people that's done with sin and done with the world and done with self who will yield their bodies a living sacrifice. Oh, God, get a remnant, I pray thee. Oh, God, get the remnant that you want. Oh, God, God, I pray thee, call us, keep after us, convict us, deal with us. Don't let us go. Don't let us go. Save us from lightness and shallowness and worldliness. Oh, God, save us from lukewarmness and indifference, I pray thee. Please, please. Please, let us know how close is your coming, how few are the hours for our decision. I pray thou wilt send such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a manifestation of your holiness and righteousness upon us and among us. Do whatever needs to be done. Only glorify thy Son and make us your circumcision of people who truly worship God in the Spirit. We want to sing with the Spirit the songs that He's singing. We want to sing the song that the Holy Ghost is singing to Jesus. Oh, we want to sing the songs. We want to sing the song that He wants to hear from His church, from His holy bride put on us the burden that's on your heart and help us to pray as we've never prayed before let us carry the travail of your soul with you to fill up that which is left behind oh my father that the cup might be filled that you can pour out what you want to give us in this last hour. 
I pray for every man in the church. I pray for every woman in the church. I pray for pastors. I pray for young people. I pray thou would visit us with a holy visitation from God that will take us from glory to glory and change us into thy holy likeness. In Jesus' sacred name and for his glory we ask it. Praise the Lord. Amen.